internet friends. Remember a couple weeks ago when I made a video about our favorite billionaire philanthropist, Bill Gates? The great grandson of the president of the National City Bank and director of the Seattle branch of the Federal Reserve. The son of William Gates, an attorney who sat on the board of Planned Parenthood before the days of Roe versus Wade. Gates Sr. rubbed shoulders with people who would go on to shape the 21st century. And it would appear that this pedigree translates to one thing. The path for Bill Gates was forged long ago. Yes, in the last video, I covered who Bill Gates was before Microsoft. And I laid out a brief but curious timeline of who he was after Microsoft in order to provide context to the current events we're seeing play out across the world stage. This is very rare for me, but we gotta go back in. We gotta make a second video on this character because it's apparent to me that I went too easy on him. And with what's at stake here, I can't live with that. So here we go. Hold on to your butts, internet friends. It's gonna be a wild ride because today, we're gonna talk about exactly who Bill Gates was after Microsoft. I'm just a fake silhouette, avoiding every threat. Bill Gates, with a net worth of $98.9 billion, accumulated the bulk of his wealth through Microsoft stock. But he would have never amassed such a great fortune without his special relationship and contracts with the United States government as well as governments around the world. Contracts that would date back to the 1980s and are still being awarded today. Bill actually got called out on this in 1999, when a federal judge ruled that this edge had given Microsoft unparalleled dominance in the computer industry to bully rivals and squelch competition. This ruling depicted Microsoft as an unrestrained behemoth, and the Justice Department hailed the ruling as an important victory that served to illustrate that in America, no person or company is above the law. Soon after getting a reputation as the bully and the bad guy, Bill established the Gates Foundation in 2000 with his wife, father, and Warren Buffett. And eventually the Gates Foundation became the largest private foundation in the world, holding around $50 billion in assets, with its stated goals claiming that from poverty to health to education, the goal is to improve the quality of life for billions of people. And for decades, the Gates Foundation has given free vaccinations to people in third world countries. While Bill has become more and more politically outspoken, lining the pockets of our elected officials with Federal Reserve notes, and buying influence, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, let's talk about these countries the Gates Foundation has touched. We'll begin in India. Between 2000 and 2017, in an effort to eradicate polio, the Gates Foundation worked in tandem with India's National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, which mandated doses of polio vaccines with overlapping immunization programs to children under the age of five. During this time, a non-polio acute flaccid paralysis epidemic rocked India, paralyzing 490,000 children, which Indian doctors turned around and blamed the Gates Foundation for and the Indian government swiftly dialed back the immunization regimen and all financial ties between the Gates Foundation and the NTAGI were severed because of the conflicts of interest between the Gates Foundation and pharmaceutical companies. There were questions on how these conflicts of interest may have influenced India's vaccination strategy during this time. In 2010, the Program for Appropriate Technology and Health, otherwise known as PATH, which has received hundreds of millions of dollars in grants from the Gates Foundation, conducted an unlawful and unethical study on thousands of tribal girls in India, testing out two HPV vaccines. Pat's experiments were halted after seven children died. Later, a government report stated that the deaths were unrelated to the HPV drugs, but the Standing Indian Parliamentary Committee maintained that the deaths were linked to the inoculation and they pointed out that PATH conducted themselves unethically, lacking informed consent from their human guinea pigs. As many of the girls' parents were illiterate and couldn't sign their own name, so they signed their consent forms with a thumbprint. Furthermore, the adverse events as a result of these studies were not properly monitored or reported. 
but the data the committee collected revealed that beyond the seven girls who had died, 120 of the girls experienced adverse reactions like severe headaches and stomach aches, epileptic seizures, and many even experienced early onset menstruation. While the committee recommended legal action against PATH, the government of India decided to just issue a warning letter. PATH's response was to defend itself, saying that what they were doing was an observational study of two already approved vaccines, not a clinical trial. Thus, informed consent and in monitoring adverse reactions was unnecessary. Luckily, when I searched these incidents, the authoritative voice of Snopes appears at the top of my search engine, ready and willing to tell me how silly these claims are, and that there is no link between PATH and the Gates Foundation. Even though the Gates Foundation has documented all of their grants and the catalog is easily searchable. Well, anyway, if Snopes says it's fake news, I guess we'll all just forget about it. God bless you, Snopes. So let's move on to the Gates Foundation in Africa. In 2002, the Gates Foundation Sub-Saharan African Vaccination Campaign forcibly vaccinated thousands of children against meningitis. And of the 500 who received the shot, 50 were left paralyzed, with the title of an article boldly stating, We are guinea pigs for the drug makers. 2010 was a big year for the Gates Foundation. It was the year the Gates Foundation committed $10 billion to the World Health Organization. Keep in mind, the World Health Organization is now operated by a known terrorist. I'm not even kidding you, I, I wish I was. Tedros is a former member of the violent Ethiopian Communist Party. Anywho, Bill Gates' donation was sent off with him saying, we must make this the decade of vaccines. And indeed, he has pretty much met that goal over the last decade. Later in 2010, the Gates Foundation funded a trial of an experimental malaria vaccine, which killed 151 African children, including infants. Over 1,000 of the 6,000 individuals who underwent this malaria drug trial were left with paralysis, seizures, and convulsions. In 2014, the World Health Organization was accused of chemically sterilizing millions of Kenyan women without their consent. They did this with what was said to be a tetanus vaccine. The World Health Organization has since admitted to developing sterility and family planning vaccines for over a decade. Of course, Africa isn't the only place these forced sterilizations have reached. Beyond vaccines, they've even tried to limit fertility by genetically modifying crops like they did with contraceptive corn. And back when Monsanto was only Monsanto, not Bayer Monsanto, Gates had invested millions and millions of dollars in the company. But back to Africa. A 2017 study showed that the DTP vaccine that the World Health Organization had issued across Africa was killing more children than the actual diseases the vaccine was supposed to prevent against. The published study showed that the DTP vaccinated girls suffered 10 times the death rate of children who had not yet received the vaccine. And you would think that in response, the World Health Organization would recall the vaccine. No, it's still in use today. So what does that tell you about their intent? So now we're up to speed with the needed context to properly assess the present. When we combine the aforementioned anecdotes alongside Bill Gates' opinion that the world is overpopulated, his simulations of viral outbreaks, and his predictions that he will be mankind's savior, then sandwich all of that between Gates Foundation's Event 201, which was held back in October of 2019 and was a high-level pandemic exercise that played out a novel coronavirus pandemic with potentially catastrophic consequences. We can then partner that information with the fact that the 2019 Military World Games were taking place at the exact same time, hosting 110 nations and thousands of military members from around the world, and none other than Ground Zero, Wuhan, China. The cherry on top is really the Bill Gates Reddit AMA, or the question and answer session. 
in which he disclosed his goal of having digital certificates for any and all people to show who has recovered from the coronavirus, or been tested recently, or if they've received their coronavirus vaccine. All of this seems to be a move towards ID2020, which is a global digital ID program that Microsoft has lended and engineered technology in pursuit of. This is all very interesting and disturbing and altogether unsurprising at this point, but what we've got here is a really curious sequence of events, which Snopes would quickly dismiss as mere conjecture or coincidence. But no one cares what Snopes thinks, even though they're promoted to the top of every Google search. They solicit prostitutes on the company clock anyway. What I care about is what you think, so what's going on here? Many of you believe that this deception needed to be put to a halt, and you took to change.org to petition to stop ID2020. But unfortunately, many of your petitions were swiftly removed. This is probably due to the fact that Bill Gates has bought influence in change.org with millions of dollars in donations. Here's what I think. Between all of the loudly voiced opinions on how overpopulated Bill thinks our world is, his vaccination program's invested interest disguised as philanthropic efforts, his ride on Lolita Express and business dealings after Jeffrey Epstein was registered as a sex offender, the thousands of graphic child images found on Bill Gates' property during that time, and his nonstop campaign to control global health policy. I think his use of spirit cooking Marina Abramovic in Microsoft's most recent commercial is so revealing of who these people actually are. Marina Abramovic is a self-proclaimed artist who specializes in what she calls performance art that only those in high, illuminated society and politics appreciate, and everyone else recognizes her as a bargain bin Aleister Crowley doing satanic rituals. And we made our disdain for this level of taunting so perfectly clear that Microsoft was forced to take the commercial off the internet. Now, Bill Gates' social media is filled with the voices of those who have had enough from other famous folks to medical personnel to ordinary individuals. So let me leave you with this. Now it's my turn to play Nostradamus. I predict that Bill Gates will cry out in pain very soon, bouncing from CNN to LN to C-SPAN, talking about the unfair campaign against him. Remember, his great-granddaddy was president of the Federal Reserve Bank in Seattle, and being a professional victim is in his DNA. But no matter how many articles published by Snopes or Washington Post or how many PR segments they do on Bill Gates' character, remember that at the end of the day, we did not elect Bill Gates as president. We are not his human guinea pigs and we do not consent. So internet friends, what do you think? You know I always look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye!